all, of course, um, uh, many of y'all know by now about my friend Cornell Gaskin. Uh, I love y'all too. And um, I'm going to tell you all that, and everybody know it. Anybody that know me, anybody that know Cornell, really know him. Me and Cornell were best friends. I got three best friends in the whole world. Jasper Willis, Cornell Gaston, and somebody else I ain't going to tell you everything. But Cornell was my best friend. And uh, I didn't have time to do like a long tribute on Facebook. Cornell was a one of a kind dude. And first thing I want us to do to be praying for his wife, Talisha. Let's keep her in our prayers. Keep his son Jojo, Josiah. Just turned 18 years old. Keep him in your prayers. He's starting to date now. And um, keep his mom in your prayers, Mother Gaskin. I spoke to her earlier today. I spoke to Quinnell's wife last night and early this morning. I spoke to Mother Gaskin today. Keep his sister, Ty, Tanisha. Sister Ty, Taisha, keep her in your prayers as well. And then keep all the other friends and brothers that he may have. That was my brother. If it, you know, my brothers, they'll tell you that Cornell is like the sixth right brother. And I'm, I'm going to be on here for about, I'm going to try not to stay on here too long, but I got to, I got to um, get this off my heart. Because sometimes talking about it, will help you in your dealing with it. But um, I met Quinnell July 1997. I was 19 years old. Just turned 19. And Quinnell was 16 years old. And um, you're going to hear this story a lot in the next few days. I had just, um, at 19, I was one of the up-and-coming good young musicians here in New York. This is three years after my shut-in. So now I'm playing all over the city. I'm playing for Bishop Figueroa. I'm playing for Carl Jackson, One Nation Praise. I'm playing for everybody. I'm just, I'm just going all over the place. And then I did my first live recording with my father. I was playing for so many different churches. But I did my first live recording with my father in Cincinnati, Ohio. Some of y'all may remember the song, Been There, Done That, and all of those. Keep the fire burning. That's me on the organ at 19. So in my mind, I'm thinking I'm the stuff. You know, I started to get the big head like, like a 19-year-old talented kid would do. So my grandfather is pastoring a small church on South Franklin Street in Hempstead. Across the street from the old Faith Baptist where J.J. Howell's dad was. And we had an afternoon service. I go over there with my father. He, my father had to preach. And my grandfather... Put my father up. My father did whatever he did. It's a little fat kid sitting there on the front row. A little fat boy. And uh, after my father did what he did, and we, you know we did the praise break, we shouted on me, my brothers played and all that. I'm on the organ getting ready to play for the offering. And Mike McLean says, uh, yeah, that's J.C. Wright. That's my pop. Mike McLean said, yo, let him play. Because I knew Mike. He was the deacon at my grandfather's church. He said, yo, let him play. I said, who? He said, him right there. I said, that little fat boy? Can he play? Because Cornell was just sitting there. I didn't know him. 
I'm like, I ain't, I ain't letting him play. He can't play. Then my pops get mad at me, and he get on there and start messing up, and I get yelled at. He said, no, nah, Davey, let him play. I said, can you play? He said, well, no, it didn't say what he said. He just smiling. All right, come play. I got out the organ and let Cornell play for the offering. At 16 years old, oh my God. That, that ninja did some stuff on that organ I ain't never seen. I'm standing there like, what in the hell? Yo, excuse I was 19. What in the hell is going on? Who is this boy? And from that day, I had a white Honda Accord that I had to start with a screwdriver. From that day, me and Quinnell practiced and shed it at his church on Merrick Road in Freeport every day for two years. 2 things that 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 taught me don't judge a book by its cover and never get the big head cuz I was starting to get the big head and that humbled me all the way cuz Quinnell played circles around anybody I ever heard in my life especially me from that day I kid you not for 2 years every single day we shed it together cuz I didn't know he lived in Ro he lived in Roosevelt Right by, right by me. He didn't drive, so I had to go pick him up in my little Honda Accord all the time. We, I pick him up. We go to McDonald's. He get a big sweet iced tea, and and we sit there and we play all day at his church right there, Bishop uh, Gibson's church. For two years, every single day. If it wasn't for Quinnell, I would not have excelled in my playing the way I did. He showed me just about everything. We, we would practice the same thing. We would do about 10 songs, but we do it each song in every key. And Cornell was just as fast with his left hand as he was with his right hand. He didn't know the Brooklyn style of playing, so I was showing him a little bit of Brooklyn style that I knew. And he was just fat. Everything. Any, any run you hear me doing, Anything you hear me doing, all the chords, whatever, all of that came from Cornell Gasket. Then my brother Dwayne came in and started playing bass with these weird bass lines that Cornell would come up with. Then Derek would come in. Derek was already doing, doing his thing all over the place. And we were best friends. The only thing that would happen when it was time to hang out and do other stuff. Y'all y'all know what other stuff I'm talking about. Not no smoking, no drinking, but you know, any any other stuff. Ladies, girls, whatever. Quinnell was always the one. No, we ain't going, I ain't going over there. No, we don't need to go over there. No, y'all don't need to go over there. One time, my friend, Charles Williams, Depton Williams' brother, I'm gonna tell the story. Charles Williams, um, we were getting ready to drop him off at some chick house. After we had finished shedding, we were getting ready to drop Charles off at some girl home. And Cornell's in the back seat. Now I got a Land Cruiser. I got the Jeep now. Cornell in the back seat with Charles, Dwayne, me and Dwayne in the front seat. And Depton is back there too. And Cornell, Charles, like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tear whatever, tear or whatever he's saying. I don't know. And Ch and and Cornell get to talking. No, we ain't got no business doing that. We saved. We saved. God good to us. Cornell is at this time like 16, 17 years old. Maybe 18. No, we saved. We, we ain't got no business doing that. We ought to keep ourselves. We ought, God has been so good to us. What if the rapture come right while you're doing what you're doing? And Charles, and you're going to be on your way to hell. No, I don't want to see none of my friends go to hell. He start preaching. Next thing I know, I look in the back seat and Charles starts, Charles is back there crying. Charles is in the back crying. Talking about what must I do to be saved? This is the kind of dude Quinnell was. 
He was saved and he loved the Lord. He was more saved than anybody I ever met as far as the musician. He, he had the Holy Ghost for real. He got it from his mom. His mother Gaskin got the Holy Ghost fire in her feet. And a step further, the different steps of our relationship. Thank you, Lord. Because for the, the, the record, for the rest of my life, I'll serve the Lord. Everybody knows that song. That was done in 2003. Quinnell was supposed to be the keyboard player on that record. Quinnell was supposed to play keys. I'm on organ. You know, Melvin Criswell, everybody that added up. The main, the main organist was me and the main keyboard player. The main bass player was Dwayne. The main keyboard player was supposed to be Quinnell Gaskin. We did about two rehearsals. And Quinnell, to the woman he's married to, eventually, Quinnell lost his virginity. Quinnell um, slipped up and fornicated. And he, he came to the house and met us at the house 15 Myers Street in Roosevelt to talk to my father. Sitting down, talking to my dad, he said, Pastor Wright, I'm sorry. I can't play on this recording. I just can't do it. I'm like, you know, Cornell, what is going on? What, what's the deal? He said, I can't do it, Dave. I, I can't. And my father's asking, come on, come on, talk to me, son. Because now, this is a major record we about to do. And my pops done heard Cornell. He said, no, I ain't heard nobody play like that since James Perry. Some of y'all don't know James Perry. James Perry from New Jersey. He is the one that got all that, got da, 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 did all the overdubs for all them old records from my pops. And um, I'm going to get to that, Marlo, in a minute. Uh, Quinnell said, I can't, do, I can't play. And my father, my father's a pastor. He's hot. He's livid. He's mad. Because we thought of rehearsal. We got Dottie Peoples on this. We got Bishop Heads on this. We got uh, Valerie Boyd on here. Kirby Brown. Everybody. And Quinnell pulls out. Pulls out of playing for the session. Because he fornicated. My father said, you ain't the only one that did that. I know, I know Pastor Wright. I know, but I, I, just, I just can't do it. I can't. And my father was a hot man. And that's when we had to go get Travis Sales to play. Travis was only 15 or 16 at that time. So Travis was never even supposed to play on that record. That was all supposed to be Quinnell. This is history you're learning here. That's 2003, 21 years ago. This is how long this man been my friend. And when he did that, it showed me something about him and something about me. Because sometimes as ministers, we think we can live any kind of way with no conviction. But Cornell was so convicted that he sat himself down. He sat himself down, Donnie Mac. So then the next year, uh, Cornell actually gets married at this time. He's married to uh, Talisha, God bless her. And he played on the record, um, Let's Celebrate. If you hear the record, Let's Celebrate, that's Cornell on there. And prior to that, there's another record that he did called um, I Hear Music in the Air. And Cornell is on a couple of the songs on that. And then our first group that we ever had, me and my brothers, it was called DW Project. This is a group that me and my brother started with Quinnell. It was supposed to only be an instrumental group. It was only supposed to be an instrumental group, a band. It was me, Quinnell, Dwayne, Derek, Donnie, Cito, Avi, Hanan, Avery that played guitar, Jay White. We were, we were just a band. But I started writing songs and we put singing to it. 
Then Quinnell started writing songs. We put singing to it. Derek, Donnie, and Dwayne, they don't write songs. So me and Quinnell was writing songs. Every song on that record we wrote, except for the one that Demetrius Griffin did. And that's the first DW Project record. And, and that group went across the whole, all up and down the East Coast. That was all Cornell. That was 2004. He moved to Dallas and relocated to Dallas. And then, you know, because his wife is from Dallas. But Cornell is from Long Island. He relocated to Dallas. We always stayed in touch. When he come up, we together. When I go down, we hanging together. He started playing for Juanita Bynum. Started playing for Fred Hammond. Started playing for Myron Williams. Did a couple of things for Kirk Franklin. And um, when Cornell did move back to New York, Around 2016, I'm now pastoring. And Quinnell said, I'm going to come play for you. For about two years, Quinnell came right here to Grace and became the musician here for two years. He made everybody in the band better. He did our 9 o'clock service, our 9.30 service, and our 12 noon service for two years. And he would not, when he would come, he would get here early. You ain't got to worry about Cornell being late. He's on time. He'd get here early and be in Sunday school. And then he'll take over the Sunday school. If Minister Fisher was on here, he'd tell you, Elder Fisher. He would take over the Sunday school, teaching the word of God. And the first time, many of y'all didn't know, but one of the times is Minister Cornell Gaskin. He preached right here at Grace on a Sunday morning. He said, nobody never asked me to preach, Pastor, when, I, when I'm playing. And he always called me Pastor in front of everybody. We friends for over 20 years. And uh, he was here for, with us for two years, and then he relocated back to Dallas. When I got the call and he was sick, Beginning of the year, he was dying off with stage four cancer back in January. All over his stage four cancer, lung cancer, and then it spread all over his body. Not one time did Quinnell ever speak doubt. He believed till the end. And many don't know because when I went to go, I was with Quinnell this past Friday and Saturday. I was down there in Dallas with Cornell. And um, I didn't post any of the pictures because it's not a photo op for me. I wasn't going down there to take pictures and show people I'm with, my, I'm with Cornell Gaskin. That's my brother. And uh, when all of this happened, I did the benefit concert for him. We raised a, a substantial amount of money and sent down to him and his wife. And when I was with him on Friday and Saturday, I left him Saturday. When I was, but before I left, I started playing. I went in his piano room where his son got the studio set up. I started playing Wind Peace Like a River. It is well with my soul. He was taking a nap. And his wife said, he opened his eyes. And he's just looking up like this. He was coherent. He was talking. Very weak in his voice. But he was coherent and talking and in a lot of pain. And then I stopped playing. She said, keep playing. Keep playing. I kept playing. And he was just doing his head back and forth. He knows my playing, of course. Because we've been playing together. We started 27 years ago. And um, when I came back that next morning, that Saturday morning before I got on my flight, we prayed with him. And uh, God bless my wife. My wife is a praying woman. She prayed with him. And before I left, he said, Dave, I'm tired. He said, I'm tired. I said, Quinnell, I know you are. You've been fighting this thing. 
And he just said it again. I'm tired. And I can truly say, because that was Saturday, Monday night, Monday evening sometime, he had an episode and his heart stopped Monday evening. And he was in ICU all day yesterday, which is Tuesday. I left him on Saturday, and he said he was tired. I can truly say this. While lifting them up and, and helping them get situated, helping them sit up in the bed, helping them to lay down. And his wife doing such an amazing job with him. His son doing such an amazing job with him. And uh, all the pain that he was in. He suffered. And I can tr truly say that his suffering is over. That's where I find peace. Because I, when I, in talking to him, I told him, I said, I'm going to tell this story. He said, tell it, Dave. Tell it. So somebody said, you're spilling all the tea. Quinnell knew I was going to tell this. He never stopped believing. And he said this out of his mouth. I choose to rest in his peace. That's what he said. I said, say that again, Cornell. I choose to rest in his peace. And when I left him on that Saturday, I kind of had a feeling that he fought a good fight and it was really well with his soul. And there's been so much going on We've been losing so many people. You know, it's too many to even name. Yeah, that's what he said. He said, I choose to rest in this peace. And uh, we're going to miss Cornell Gaskin. So many of us have traveled. Trav, Travis Davis. He was on tour with y'all. He was all over the place with y'all with Myron. So many of us. And everybody can have the same testimony about mm -hmm. Cornell. Ain't nobody got to lie about Cornell. Cornell was saved and loved the Lord. Cornell loved God for real. But we're going to keep his family in our prayers. And keep his brothers. Keep his brothers... You know, he didn't have any uh, biological brothers that I know of, not none that I ever seen. But please keep me and my brothers in prayer, because we were like his brothers, man. We wanted to protect him, because we knew once people heard him, and my father was his protection as well. We knew once people heard this dude, they were gonna grab on him and pull on him. And some people take have taken advantage of him. Some people still owe Cornell right now. Oh, I'm going to tell you, that song, this is the day that um, Fred Hammond got. That was arranged by Cornell Gaskin. You'll never know it. So many people took advantage of him and didn't do him right. And Cornell... He would never get disrespectful with nobody. He just know how to treat you going forward. Oh yeah. And it's... Man, if we... Travis, if we start talking about all of the stuff that Cornell arranged, all of the music that's really his, a, a musical genius. A musical genius. I love Myron Williams. That that's my brother. But all of that music on Myron's first that first record. I just want you. All that stuff. That's Cornell. That's all that is Cornell.
everything on DW Project. I ain't going to take the credit for arranging. That's Quinnell. They know it. They know it, and they, they won't deny it. And um, I believe that the legend of Cornell Gaskin is going to do more in his death than it did in his life. The legend, his legacy is going to do more. Listen, pray for his son. Because his son, he just kept saying, I just want my dad to get better. That's what JoJo kept saying. And pray for his wife. Who, who, and, and I don't care, don't let, listen, that woman did all she could. I was there. I saw with my own eyes how she took care of him. I was there when they were setting up the hospice bed in the living room. Because sometimes you marry the wrong one, they, they ain't going to do right by you. He married the right one. So he fought a good fight. And um, we're just going to be prayerful. And God going to get us through this, just like he did before. All right? I love y'all. Thank y'all for just hearing my heart for a little while. I hope I don't get into no, too much trouble for what I said. And I was going to get a motorcycle this summer. I told Cornell, I said, yo, Cornell, when I get back, I'm getting a motorcycle. Cornell said, no. Don't get no motorcycle, Dave. There's too much going on. There's just so much going on. Don't get no motorcycle. So I'm not getting no motorcycle. Because my, my wife told me not to get one. A couple of other friends said don't get one. But I'm definitely not getting one now. Because Cornell. Cornell said don't get no motorcycle. There's too much going on. All right. I love y'all. Love on your people. Love on your people while they're still here. That's my best friend. And he knew I loved him while he was here. All right, y'all. Peace.